Hi and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to show you how you can compile a LaTeX document inside PyCharm. Here as you can see on my screen I have PyCharm open on my computer. You can see that on the left I have my LaTeX code and on the right I have a PDF viewer that shows me the content of the PDF. So in today's video I want to show you how you can get started and how you can set up the project so you can compile your latex code directly inside PyCharm. This feature I think is great for a person like me that writes Python code or you can actually run this plugin in any of the IntelliJ uh, suite of software so also in WebStorm but the advantage is that allows you to write code in the same place where you like write your latex code and then compile the document and visualize your PDF. So here is, for example, a paper that I wrote and here on the right you can see all the paper and all the information about the paper. So in this video I will show you how to install a latex distribution on your computer that is going to be necessary to in, uh, compile the latex document but also I'm going to show you which plugins you need to install. Throughout the video, here at the bottom, you should be able to see all the keystrokes that I'm pressing. So let's get started and let's see what we need to get started in order to compile our latex document inside PyCharm. So the first thing that we need to do is to install Taxify IDEA inside, our, uh, inside PyCharm. So you can look for the JetBrain marketplace here on the internet and then you can click on install to PyCharm but usually I just go simply inside PyCharm and here at the top I can go into settings so here settings and I can press command command comma and this opens the settings this instruction will work both for Linux, Windows and Mac users the only slightly difference here is going to be the commands that you actually need to type in order to find the shortcuts. But all the rest is going to be the same. So the first thing that we need to do is to install Taxify plugin. So here in the plugins, and if you don't see the plugins after you open the settings, just go here, plugins, search for plugins, and then you click. And then here you can write Taxify. So these should open the plugins and we can see inside Marketplace, make sure you are there because if you are installed and you don't have it installed, then you don't see them. You will see that you can install Taxify IDEA and the PDF Viewer. In this case, you can see a check mark because I've already installed them, but in your case, it's going to look like something green like this. So just press install here or install here. After you install these two plugins, and the second one actually is not even needed, it's just to show the PDF inside PyCharm, just if you want it, you are going to have to uh, restart uh, PyCharm because you apply the changes. The other thing that you are going to need, unless you have it already installed on your computer, is a latex distribution. So here we can go to text live, so just Google text live and in text live you can install a latex distribution. So here I have on Mac OS, on Windows and on Linux. So in my case I will install it for Mac OS so I can click here and then I can go to the Mac text download page and I can download this package. I like this distribution because it's a bit big, so it's 5 GB, but it contains all the packages that I need. If you struggle to install it, or if you have any issues, I have also a YouTube video on how to install it. So just have a look at this video here, you should see this card, and then you can just install it on your computer. You can just type Mac text Mac, here at the top you can see, and you should be able, you should be able to see this video. So now that you have the latex distribution installed on your computer, you have the two plugins installed inside PyCharm, we can move back into PyCharm and we can create a new project and start compiling our file. And I will show you also some issues that you may encounter and we are going to solve them together. 
So here I can close this one and I can close this project. So let me go here at the top, file, new project, and then you choose where to put this project. So the first thing, since I'm inside PyCharm, you can see that he wants me to create a pure Python project. But I don't want to do that. So I want to go to other and then I can search for LaTeX. This should appear after you have installed the Taxify plugin. It is asking you where you want to put this project. So here I'm just going to put it in to my OneDrive and then I have a folder, document, YouTube channel, code videos. And then here I'm going to say LaTeX in PyCharm and then we can just press on create so this is going to create the project for us and we can close the previous project I mean of course you don't have it open most likely and we can also close the Python console and let me enter presentation mode so it's going to be easier for you to see I am in presentation mode, so I need to just press command one, as you can see here, for the presentation uh, view. So I want to see just the, the files that they are inside my project. In your case, if you are not in the presentation mode, this should be already open here on the left, so your project. So you should have an out folder and a source folder. If you don't see this, so if it's hidden, as you can see, you can just click here on project and you should see, be able to see these files. So let me expand it again, and let me enter the presentation mode, and let me just show you the project files here. Out will contain all the output files generated by LaTeX, including our PDF. In source, we should be able to see the source file. What the file that is going to interest us the most is main.txt file. Inside here, we can see the classic begin document. So let's go here and start writing something. So we're going to say hello world. Now, of course, we want to compile this document. How can we do that? Well, we can see that here on line 11, we can see this symbol, uh, which is a green arrow, followed by a white space uh, here. And we can say actually say compile document. Another approach could have been to press option shift R. But let's click on this file here and the symbol here and press on run main. So this is going to run the project. But already we see a major problem. We already start seeing like some errors here. And the error is because we have included or PyCharm automatically included a bibliography for us. But there is no file that we are actually citing. Most likely in your file you are going to be citing files. But then if you look at this main.bib file, is empty. So let me open Arc here. And I can actually go on Scholar. And um, you can actually find the paper wherever you want. And let's go in Google Scholar. And let's look for my profile. So I can say a personal comfort models. And then I can look for one of my paper. So let's this one. And then here um, is very handy because we can press on site here and we can click on bib text. This is actually giving us the bib text entry that we can just copy and paste in PyChar. So let's go back here and then go to main.bib and then I can do um, control V. Let me show you again because I went very fast. So how did I do it? So I searched for the paper. Here at the bottom we have the site. So let's click there. And then I should be able to see here at the bottom bib text, and then I can just copy that into my document. So you should be familiar on how to cite a document uh, because this video is not about auto bibliography, but let me show you how to do that. So we can go to main.txt file here, and then I can say a uh, non breaking space because when you cite, and then we're going to do cite. And then automatically, and this already we should be able to see something very nice. If I type the title of the paper, or if I type the author, I have a suggestion, a smart suggestion on maybe which paper I want to cite. So in this case, I can just press enter. And automatically, PyCharm is entering the unique ID of that specific citation. And it's also telling us some other nice suggestions. So here, 
and uh, we can see the context action. So move interpunction to the back of the site. Because of course, we shouldn't have this exclamation mark there, but we should have it here, if we want to be precise. And this is very handy about PyCharm, because it also teaches how to write proper code. For instance, if I now say this is the second sentence, this is a test, you will see that uh, uh, most likely um, the second, or let me just uh, write two sentences followed by the other. See, because this commission mark is actually confusing it a bit, uh, but in this case it's telling us you should never have uh, two sentences on the same line. Every time you have a period, you should have the new sentence in a new line. This is extremely useful if you are going to be using Git to track your changes. And I highly recommend that you watch that video and you learn how to use Git inside LaTeX. Again, simply go on YouTube and uh, you should be able to see my video. So you say LaTeX Git and then this should be the first video or one of the first video that you find, probably not. Uh, just put Tartarini, my name, and I will put the link down in the description. I think this is an extremely important video that you should watch if you are writing any code, but even more so if you are actually um, writing a LaTeX document. So let's go back because I'm uh, digressing a bit and I still haven't shown you how you can compile this document. So now that we have clicked on this button here at the, fir the first time, you shouldn't go back here, you shouldn't run it again in this way here, because this is going to create another run file. But now you should be able to see that you have this main here at the top. So you have two options. Either click on the green arrow here, or just simply press Ctrl R. I'm going to click on the arrow so everyone can follow. But now we can see that we have a exit code equal to zero, and we can see our paper. In my case, I have installed Scheme, which is a PDF viewer that is actually showing us the PDF here on the screen. But in your case, you probably don't have this PDF viewer, so let me show you how you change that behavior and how to have the PDF open automatically inside PyCharm. So let's go back to PyCharm. Here we are. And then we go into this config file. So don't go into main bibliography, but go to main, here you see that it's blue and then you have three lines and you click on more actions and then you click on edit. Here we can see the compiler which goes beyond the scope of this video. I'm not going to talk about the type of compiler. Leave it to PDF LaTeX. And then here you have the PDF viewer. So if now you have installed the built-in PDF viewer, maybe in your case by default is no PDF viewer, but if you have scheme installed or if you have the built-in PDF viewer, you can select either of them. I also want to show you a couple of other things which are very important is this uh, text live uh, distribution. This is what we have installed before in the first step. And uh, the nice thing uh, that PyCharm has already configured the bib text uh, configuration for you. So you don't have to do anything about that. So let's go here. Let's press on OK. And let me know if you want to, me to create another video to just work specifically about the, the bib text entry and the bibliography. Uh, but if you use the default, that's all. And also, I, as I told you before, before the out folder was empty, but now we have our main.pdf. So let's add another sentence. Uh, this is uh, um, my second sentence. My second citation. Yeah, it's fine. doesn't matter. And uh, so now I can just uh, um, leave it like this. Uh, and actually it's telling us uh, an error here, but this is not actually an error. So it's getting it uh, wrong because this is uh, um, just the article class. So this is, this is okay. I don't know why we're getting that error. It's also probably telling us that this package uh, is, um, may not be installed, but is already installed because we have installed the big LaTeX uh, distribution. I'm showing this uh, quick uh, tip, but on Mac is by pressing Option and Enter, and you should be able to see here at the bottom. And if you want, you can also click on Install, and you should install it, but we have it already installed. So let me recompile the document with Ctrl R, and now that we have switched to the internal PDF viewer, we see the PDF here on the right. 
So let me collapse a bit. So I'm pressing, I'm moving away that uh, view and I'm not showing this uh, compilation because I just want to keep it uh, simple. In your case, you will uh, probably see something nicer, something like this. Uh, you have more room, I'm just me because I'm in the presentation mode. But now you can see the PDF on the right and you can see the latest code on the left. And now you can go ahead and you can go ahead and you can change uh, like uh, add another uh, sentence and that's it. Uh, then uh, you can recompile the document with Ctrl R and this is going to recompile the document and this is added a new sentence. Another quick thing that I want to show you since we are here is how you can go back and forth and how you can uh, kind of uh, see where these changes, uh, this code, uh, this text here is in your document. This doesn't always work perfectly, but let me show you. So here you can go into this line here, wherever you want, like for instance, second. Let me actually zoom in a bit so you should be able to see. So if I move the cursor here and I press command and then left click, this is taking me to the paragraph where that sentence is appearing. The same should be true if I write uh, this is uh, the method using the paper. Let me recompile the document. So now you see that this is in a new paragraph because we have left uh, an empty space. So if I click here and I click on Command Shift A and then I can say forward search here. This is actually showing me in red uh, that sentence. And let me do with the low because we actually was already red because we compiled that. So let me do this for our search. And as you can see, we can see the paragraph highlighted. This is very handy, especially when you have a very big document because if you're scrolling here and you're changing your latest document, you can quickly go to the PDF and that section of the PDF that you're actually editing. I really hope this video was useful. If it was, and if you're still listening, first of all, I would like to thank you. The second thing that I would like to ask you is, uh, if you find this video useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot to me to understand that you like this content. If you feel like writing a comment or if something was not clear, please go ahead and write a comment. I always try to reply to all the comments. If you think that you have learned something valuable today, you can also consider supporting this channel by buying me a coffee or supporting me on Patreon. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope you have learned something useful today. Have a great day.